Hey there, it's Natalie, and I am still in my sewing room. Um, so let me tell you a story just real quick. There's a new bride, and she's going to fix a roast for her husband, and so she immediately cuts off the ends of the roast and puts it in the oven, and it is absolutely delicious. And the, But the husband asked her, he said, why did you cut the ends of the roast off? And she says, well, that's the way the recipe is. That's the way my mom taught me to do it. And so the next occasion that they're at a family gathering and mom is there and the grandma is there. And so the bride, the new bride, asks mom, why do we cut the ends of the roast off? Well, that's the way that my mom showed me to do it. So they ask grandma, why did you cut the ends of the roast off? And grandma says, my pan was too small. That's the only way it would fit. And so whenever I'm showing you how to do some of this sewing stuff, I don't mean to leave out any details. I've just been doing this so long, it's just the way that I've done it. So, having said that, this video is going to be for a very beginner sewer. -er. Not a sewer, but a sewer. It's spelled the same. Anyway, so if you're more advanced, I'm going to do the scrub cap one more time. <laughs> I think this is all. Hopefully this pandemic is gone, gone, or towards its end, but we're still going to have nurses, and they're still going to have ponytails, and they're still going to need scrub caps. So, I'm going to do this for the beginner. It's not like how to use your sewing machine. So, if you don't know how to sew, use a sewing machine, you need to go find out how to do that. But, I'm going to do like, because of the questions that I've had, I'm going to do um, real time, very detailed, pretty sides, wrong sides, all that kind of stuff and um, so if you and I'm not gonna do like using scraps or using fat quarters or for big hair I'm this is gonna be the regular scrub cap and I've taken way too much time in this introduction so it's for beginner sewers if you don't need this one go over to my other ones I'll put the link in the description below below so you can just fast forward through that get to the end of the video and do what you're gonna do okay but for the beginner we are fixing to go through this uh, the scrub cap with the ponytail step by step the supplies that you're gonna need for this project first you need a sewing machine you can sew this by hand but I am not not fixing to show you how to sew this by hand, okay? Just not. So you're going to need a sewing machine and some knowledge of your sewing machine. Just basic knowledge. Straight stitching is pretty much it. Uh, I am going to use a serger, but you can also use a zigzag. I will show you how to use a zigzag instead of the serger in case your machine has a zigzag option. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is go to my haul closet, free good stuff, and I'll put the link in the description box below, and you're going to download the pattern. There are several patterns there, but this is the one you're going to need, which is the main scrub hat pattern. And uh, you're going to cut it out. Uh, oh, when and it should fit exactly, but you might choose on your printer settings, you might choose uh, actual size and there's a one inch grid right here that shows you when you measure that out if you've got it the right size okay so then you're gonna cut out your pattern and got two pieces of your main piece and you're going to match I cut this one with a little extra at the bottom and then you'll match these two hash marks and tape and again, because I get asked like some really strange questions, I'm using scotch tape. If you want to use washi tape, you can use washi tape. If you don't have tape and you'd like to staple it together, staple it together. If you want to use straight pins to put it together, put it together with that. If you want to use duct tape, use duct tape. I like to use scotch tape and just put it together like that. Okay? Again, I'm not being a smarty. It's just because of the questions that I've had. All right, so the other thing you're gonna need, you've got your pattern, and we've cut the pattern out. This one's gonna be on the fold, and this is gonna be on the fold. It says right there, on the fold. All right, you're also gonna need something for your drawstrings. So you can either use ribbon. 
I like to use the Grow Grain ribbon. This one is 5 8 inch. Let's see if that's what that says. 5 8 inch. You can use half inch. You can use 5 8 You can use 1 inch. You can use bias tape. You can use, you can make your own drawstrings out of the fabric. Okay? So, it doesn't have to be exact, exact, exact. Use what you have. Use what you can get. Elastic. This is going to go at the bottom, in the, in the bottom part of the ponytail to cinch this up. You can use quarter inch. You can use half inch. You can use three eighths. You can use no elastic. Whatever you have, be creative. Think outside the box. Do what you can with what you have where you are, okay? I just want to encourage you. You're going to need some thread, a needle. Doesn't matter what size, as long as you can get the thread through the eye. You're going to, and you're going to use this to hand sew on the buttons. And the buttons, this is for to take the pressure off of your ears for the mask. You can use this size button. Or you can use this size button. Or you can use anything in between. And you can use brown. You can use yellow. You can use green. You can I mean, I'm going to use this fabric. You can use light yellow, dark green. Be creative. Please, guys, be creative. Okay? You're going to need some straight pins to be able to pin your fabric. I'm using just regular, I think this is probably a poly cotton blend of thread and... Uh, it's going to kind of match my fabric that I'm using. Paper scissors. Don't cut your pattern with your good fabric scissors. And you're going to need something to cut your fabric with. Okay? This is to mark the buttonholes and the buttons. This one disappears. This is a mark speak on. And it disappears with water. This one is Taylor's chalk. It's really great for marking on dark fabrics. And this is a plain old ordinary pencil. No big deal. Just a light pencil mark to mark those button patterns. Okay, so that's the supplies that you're going to need. I think I have everything covered on that. And so I'm going to clear this off and uh, talk to you about the fabric. Oh, you're going to need, on the for the ties, these need to be 15 inches long. But I'll tell you that. And it's also on your pattern. It says 45 inches of fabric, a fourth of a yard, or 42 inch wide fabric, you'll need a third of a yard. Two 15 inch pieces of ribbon, they can be 18 inches, uh, you know, okay? And one three and a half inch, quarter inch elastic, or half inch, or three eighths inch, okay? This is just kind of a suggestion. So whenever it's talking about one, three and a half inch long, quarter inch wide or half, quarter inch or half inch or three eighths or whatever you have. Okay. Okay, I am using the sunflower fabric that has a pretty side, that's the right side, and this ho-hum side. That's the wrong side of the fabric. This straight edge, this is the selvage edge, and there's not very much stretch in the selvage edge. This is the cross grain, and there's stretch. And I like to cut the band, the main part, on this cross grain. So there's two selvage edges, one on one side of the fabric and one on the other. This one has the little colored dots on it, and this one is plain, but it's the selvage edge. It's the factory edge, and this is a cut edge. Now, I washed my fabrics. I went ahead and surged the edge of it just so that it wouldn't fray off in the washing machine. But I washed my fabrics in hot water and dried them first. Okay, so I know because I've made several of these that I need about 18 inches. So I'm going to find that 18 inches. And it does not matter whether you cut this with the right sides together, uh, pretty sides together, it doesn't matter if you pin this pretty sides together. It's when you sew it that it matters. But I'm going to go ahead for right now 
and I am going to pin this with the wrong sides together. It's not important. All right, I cut off my little serged edge because I don't want to confuse you or frustrate you or make you wonder what in the world is she doing. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make self ties. And just and the reason that I'm doing that is just in case, you know, there's not like the ribbon to match or Maybe they don't, the poly ribbons don't hold up in all of the heat and the sanitizing, and I don't know that you're going to put these in an autoclave or whatever. But anyway, just to kind of appease the masses, uh, and on the off chance that you don't have a rotary cutter, I'm not going to cut this with a rotary cutter. This is two inches wide. This is not in your pattern. And I'm just going to mark this with a pencil. Again, you can mark it with whatever, I wouldn't mark it with a Sharpie, but you can mark it with whatever you'd like to mark it with. But I'm going to mark it with a pencil. And so I've got this line. This is also going to be a straight line. So I am going to put this, line this up, and we're going to kill two birds with one stone. So this is going to cut my tie and the front edge of this cap at the same time. So actually I only need 15 inches and this is already like 18 inches. Now, if you have a fatter ponytail, then you can like cut out a little further and a little bit more down if you want to, but I'm gonna cut this by the pattern. And I have a pattern over on uh, my blog that is for fat hair. So if you have fat hair or you need that pattern, you can download that one too. Okay, so that gets that, that's trash. Move that out of the way. is you can get a piece of copy paper and fold it in half and put this on there and then cut around the copy paper and then you have something that looks like this and you don't have to think about the fold and then you can just put that in there and see where that fits and I'm going to turn it this way because I've got a little bit more fullness right here I'm not on this white let me here put that right here. So I've got color all the way to my edges, even though there's a, a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And I have a yard of this fabric. All right, move that out of the way. So the next thing I want to do, right here on this crease, I want to make a little tiny notch. That's gonna be my halfway pot spot. And on this curved edge of this cap, this is halfway also. I want to make a little tiny notch right here. I mean, we're talking just an itty bitty notch. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to mark my buttonhole. Both sides. I'm going to mark it on the right side. So I'm going to put a little pin through here. And a pin right here.
Now flip it to the back side. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see that. There's my pens peeking through right there. I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to make a real soft line that I can see that. All right, and then I'm going to turn this back over. Oh, you know, while I'm doing this, let me go ahead and mark this little dot right here in the dip. Back over. There it is right there. Little pencil mark. I'm going to take these pins out and then lift this so I can see my pen right there. Put a little pencil mark right there. Make sure I can see that. And if you need to use a little piece of ink or something, but I just go ahead and stay with the pencil mark. And then uh, let me flip these. Mark the buttonhole on this side. You see the two pins right there and there? I'm gonna, everything is unpinned, and let me show you that little notch. I'll turn this over so you can see the notch. Maybe you can see it on my hand. You can see it right there, that little notch. And this little notch, they're going to match up. First thing we're going to do is go to the ironing board and press our fabric tie, our, our long strip of fabric, so that we can get ready to make a tie. To make the tie or the drawstring, I'm going to press this first, and I'm going to, before I sew everything else together, I'm going to press it also. I'm going to fold this in half and press. Then we're going to press in half again. So there's a little crease right here. And fold this edge. We're actually going to fold both edges in to that crease. Let me not turn that around so you won't think you have to turn it around. You can press from either side or both sides, whichever feels more comfortable for your hands or your position or whether you're right-handed or left-handed. The main thing is you're going to bring both of those edges to the middle.
Okay, on the ends, what you're gonna wanna do is fold this in like maybe a quarter of an inch, just a little bit. Fold this back towards the middle, back towards the middle, and then in half. And that'll, that'll get you a clean edge as you begin your tie. So I'm going to press that one more time. I'm going to do both ends like this. So it holds in place. Okay, so both of those ends are ready. Now I'm going to go ahead and press my uh, strip and my cap. It's easier to press it now and get all those extra wash washing machine wrinkles out of it now than after it's put together. I can see my pencil line. I can see my little dots right there. Oh, I forgot a dot. I need to tell you about this. On your pattern, there is a dot right there. So we want to make that dot. I'm going to go ahead and do it with this blue just so that you can see it. It's right in the middle. Our first step uh, that I'm going to do is do the drawstring. And so I have the folded edges in, and I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to start. And instead of starting off of the edge, I'm going to go ahead and bring my needle in just a little bit. And so that it doesn't bunch up. Uh, I've heard had some comments about it bunching up. We're going to do a back stitch and so that's going to be several stitches forward, several stitches back, we'll go to the edge this time, and then forward again. Get to the corner in the fold, leave the needle in in the fabric and then pivot and we're going to sew right along this edge. kind of check every now and then to make sure that my fabrics are, you know, that the stitches are catching in both pieces of the fabric. stitch forward backwards and forward again okay now I can I can cut this in half and put elastic in the middle of it the three and a half inch piece of elastic or I can use this as a drawstring just like it is and I'm going to show you both. I have two 15 inch pieces of ribbon 
you can use this, okay? You just cut it in half or cut it to 15 inches. This is my elastic. It does not matter the width. You can use the fourth inch, you can use the half inch, you can use three eighths inch. I'm going to scoot this in about the presser foot width and I'm going to do a back stitch here. I'm going to come into it, come across, back, and one more time. Here's my other piece of ribbon because I've got two pieces of ribbon. And so it's just kind of down the middle here, the presser foot here to the edge of the ribbon, to the edge of the elastic. It doesn't have to be perfection. And so now this will act as a drawstring with just a little bit of stretchy at the very base of the pattern. So the next step is going to be the buttonholes. Normally, whenever I do my buttonholes, I do a piece of interfacing on the back side and then just pin where my buttonhole needs to be. And I've got this pencil mark here that I can see. All right. But in case you don't have interfacing, you do have a scrap of fabric. It just needs a little something behind it to stabilize it. Okay. So I'm going to put this piece of fabric, the same piece of fabric, just a little scrap of it behind. And I can, I can kind of see the shadow through there that I've got my fabric lined up. I've got my pencil mark for my uh, buttonhole. And then the other thing I need to do is make sure that because my fold is an inch and a quarter and I want to mark that to make sure that's at the inch and the quarter mark to make sure that my buttonhole stops before it gets to that inch and the quarter. All right. And so I'm going to mark, uh, find my other mark. It's right there. Put another piece of fabric behind that and do the same thing. Find my middle, my buttonhole, mark down an inch and a quarter so I don't go over that. I have my pin marked at the inch and a quarter in. I've got the uh, pin mark where the buttonhole needs to go and uh, I'm not going to talk during this process because if I talk about this, then it's going to mess me up and maybe mess my setting up. So what this is going to do is it's going to zigzag with a narrow zigzag down. And then when I get to the end of this mark, I'm going to, this is the way my button holder works. I press this. Yours might do separately, but this is what I'm going to do. It's going to make a bar tack. It'll back up and I'm going to watch to make sure I don't get to this pin. And then I'll release it and it'll make another bar tack and start it again. So you'll just have to watch and see what I do. So I'm going to move away from that pin. This is the one, the inch and the quarter mark. That's what that's for there. I'm going to line my middle up with the middle of my presser foot. Pull this out. I've got fabric underneath there to stabilize it. You could put interfacing under there. And now I'm going to go without talking. And that puts me on the other side of this fold line, and I know that my machine does about three more stitches and before it makes the bar tack. So now I can cut this open. What I'll do is, um, let me go ahead and show you. And we're going to do this with both of the buttonholes. You don't need all of this extra, so I'm going to trim this out. Again, that's just to stabilize. And 
and then open that buttonhole. And I like to, you can do this however you want to, but I like to fold it in half. Make sure I'm not going to cut my stitches. And then clip. And then open it back up to finish cutting it. And you can do this from the back side or the front side. Either one, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So now we have a little buttonhole. And, uh, that's going to be where we're going to run our ribbon into and out of our drawstring, whether it's ribbon or whether it's fabric. I'm going to do my other buttonhole and then I'll... So what do you do if you don't have a buttonhole attachment or function on your sewing machine? So I'm going to make us a mock buttonhole opening right there. This is one thing. I'm going to show you two things that you can do. And then you can you can make a bound buttonhole if you want to, but I'm not going to go into all of that. So and I'm back on I'm on a straight stitch. And we're going to go back and forth and just kind of stabilize that. Turn, okay, and so now you have an, an area that you and I've done it with two pieces of fabric. And you may want to shorten your stitch a little bit. But then you have an opening there that's not going to ravel out on you. Okay, so you, that's one, one alternative. The other one is to, uh, and I'm just going to put this with two pieces of fabric. You don't need two pieces of fabric. It's just to protect my sewing machine. Aline's Fabric Fusion, or you can use Fabri-Tac. And this is going to stabilize it. Let that dry, and then you can cut your buttonhole out. Okay? And so whenever it dries, and I'll come back towards the end of the video, it'll just keep it from fraying is what it's going to do. And it's going to dry clear. And again, I protected my sewing machine was the reason that I used the second piece of fabric. You don't have to use the second piece of fabric. We'll put that out of the way so it doesn't stick to something. Okay, now it's time to get down to business. Right here is the notch. This is the curved side of the band. And so there's my middle notch. I have my cap. And here's the middle notch of my cap. Maybe see right there. And so pretty sides together. That's going to be called normally the right sides together. I'm going to pin that in place to make sure that I get that. And then... Uh, this little dot that's at the point of the cap and the dot that's in the dip, those are going to match together. And it's easier if you don't pin the whole thing all at one time. Okay? Uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Some of this is stretchy, and some of it is like, you know, because it's on the, like what would be considered the bias, like right there is real stretchy. And so we just kind of work this in.
Okay, so I'm going to go about halfway around on this side because when you get down to this point, it's really hard if you've got everything all pinned already. And I can see that this is going to match. Let me pin this one in place and then I'm going to show you. I can see that I've got my spacing about right. There's my dot. There's my dot. And I can tell that these two pieces are going to come together just fine. Like right in there. That's got some give, a little bit of stretch right there. And that's going to match together perfect. But I'm not going to pin that so that I can get into stitch this. So let me move my sewing machine back over. So this is what it looks like all pinned in place. Okay, so I'm going to put my needle in. I'm going to do a quarter inch seam. It might be just a smidgy over a quarter inch seam, but not much. It's to the edge of my presser foot. Okay, so there's my dot. I'm going to put my needle in at the dot. I'm going to do about three stitches forward. We're going to do a back stitch. Stitches just a little bit. And then back. And then forward again. And so like in this little area where I've got this little bit of a, uh, where it looks like it lifts up a little bit, it's not going to make a pleat. But if I'll just put a little bit of a tug on it, that will lay flat. I want to make sure I don't sew over my pins. See how that laid flat? Same thing, because there's a little bit of stretch going on here, because it cut it on the cross grain, and then also because some of the areas of the cap are bias, which means they're diagonally cut. We're coming to our notch. That's important. And they're still matched up. Okay, now I am to the end of where my pins were, and you can go ahead, if you want to, you can go ahead and put a couple of pins in place, or you can just, now make sure, I will go ahead and pin this, just so that you know about this, to make sure this stays in place. There's my blue dot, there's my pencil dot right there. I may have been out of the frame. There is my blue dot and my pencil dot is right there. And so I put a pin through that to match them. 
and I want to bring these pretty close together like that and if they don't meet exactly I mean this is just a little kind of maybe it not even a quarter of an inch gap there and that's okay because we'll catch that when we do the ponytail part now uh, I'm not sure where that's gone uh, to finish off if you don't have a serger now on the other my big hair video I have like where you would line it up to do the surging or where I do the surging but since I'm gonna think that maybe you don't have a serger then I'm gonna show you an alternative to that if you don't have a serger one of the other ways that you can extra reinforce this is just with another straight stitch right along the edge here's my main stitching And go all the way around and you can trim this or not trim it you can just leave it like that that just kind of does a little bit of reinforcing all right so that's one of the ways that you could finish that or if you have a zigzag on your sewing machine you come right down in here we'll set this uh, I'm going to keep my length about the way it was Set this to about a medium width of a zigzag. Let me shorten that length just a little bit. And you can zigzag that edge like that. Now because I'm going to put this cap in my Etsy shop, I'm going to go ahead and do a surged edge on it, and I'll be back. This is what my surged edge looks like, and uh, cuts it off and trims it and cleans it up. I like that. All right, so to do the ponytail part, let me make sure I'm back on my straight stitches. And I'm going to start at the straight edge not the curve of the ponytail because I want to work back into that and you can pin it together if you want to uh, it lays in pretty nicely because it was cut that way not you know not opened out and cut separately so these were cut exactly the same so like even like this little area that's right here you can tell it's exactly the same but pin if you want to or if not and then back stitch at the beginning of it again we're doing a presser foot wide Now, whenever I get to this area where the dip, the dot and the dip is, I want to make sure that this piece of fabric is not in the way. I want to pull it back out of the way a little bit, and then I'm going to stitch to that joining place right there. Back stitch. In my first video, I started here and then worked down, but I've discovered that this is really easier to, if you start at the, the straight edge and come into this curve, and that way if you need to stretch it just a little bit or whatever, you can do that. So that caught this out of the way, and you would repeat this same process. You would either do a straight stitch or a zigzag stitch or a surge stitch and come all the way up right into here and stop right in that dip so that this will still have the fullness that it needs to have okay and actually right here you can actually fold that down and uh, you don't have to fold it up you can fold it down so it's caught into that that finishing edge so straight stitch next to this stitch or zigzag or surge now we're going to turn the front band, you know, and at the beginning I didn't tell you you might need something to measure with, but uh, we, you want to make sure that your buttonhole is open before you start turning the band. It's easier to cut like this. going to measure down an inch and a quarter, 
and pan. Inch and a quarter and pan. Now we're going to turn under a quarter of an inch and so if you want to do this as you go and just like turn that under you can measure it to make sure if you if you feel like you need to measure that or you can just turn as you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it just like I was a beginner uh, rather than having made a gazillion of these so far and so you can press it if you want to if you want to take it to the ironing board and press this at an inch and a quarter and then press under that quarter inch you can do that just not being sure what skill level you're at uh, I'm gonna try to get all of these bases covered for you I hope. But if you have questions, you can be sure and contact me. Reach out to me either in comments or send me an email. Uh, nath at myhallcloset.com. If you have trouble downloading the pattern, uh, the pattern is free when you subscribe to my blog, which is myhallcloset.com. You would go to uh, myhallcloset.com slash free dash good dash stuff that's my resource library and that's free to my subscribers alright so this is the back this is the ponytail part the curved part of the ponytail and I'm gonna go ahead and turn that under a quarter of an inch this is where we're gonna start I like to start at like where it's gonna be a hidden edge And then turn this under a quarter of an inch here. Like that. Okay, if you may need more pins, by all means, put some more pins in there, okay? So I'm going to the, this, there's no other seam other than this one, and it's at the very base of the ponytail, and I'm going to uh, make sure that that seam lines up, and turned under, get that pin out of the way, put the needle in. I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. There's my buttonhole, and I'm missing that. Stitch it in. 
Oops, I ran out of bobbin. Y'all didn't tell me I ran out of bobbin. We are going to pretend like we don't have any elastic. And so we're going to use this drawstring without cutting it and without uh, putting elastic in there. So it's just one long solid piece. Okay. Put a pin in one end of it. Okay, so you've got two buttonholes. You've got a buttonhole on this side and you have a buttonhole on this side and it's only through one layer of fabric it doesn't go through both of them or you won't make a, a, a casing this little part's going to be called a casing So now what we want to do is find the halfway of our drawstring, which is here. And we're just about right on target. So let me even this out and make sure we're halfway. It doesn't have to be exactly halfway but pretty close is really good. Okay, so I'm halfway with my fold where my seam is, the bottom of the ponytail, and these match up, all right? So now what you would do, if you're gonna use this method, is you would go back to your sewing machine and you would do a stitch right in here, okay? And I'm just gonna put a pin. You're gonna put a stitch, not a pin. I'm just gonna use this as a sample. So you would have a stitch right there, and then this gives you a way for this drawstring to come up evenly on both sides to cinch in that ponytail, okay? So that's all you would do is you would have a stitch back and forth, back and forth, right there, and it's not going to come out like when they wash it. It's not going to come out, all right? And it's going to stay even, so they don't have to fight with it to find the you know, one string is longer than the other. Either you, if you're making this for you, or if you're making it for friends or daughters or wh whoever, okay? But I'm not going to do that, I'm gonna, because I'm needing to show you several techniques, all right? And take that drawstring back out. And now we're going to do the elastic. So my elastic is three and a half inches, but I need, I want a six inch gap in here, a space where that's going to bunch in. So I'm going to go three inches, and you can use a safety pin or you can use a straight pin, and I'm going to go off of the edge and just a little bit in. I'm not going to pin across, otherwise I won't get through there. All right. So, and then three inches on this side. Ignore the little blue mark. I can see that I have a three inch mark here. So three inches from that, three inches from this seam. I think in my other video I put a safety pin and that kind of got everybody all confused about what in the world was a safety pin about. So anyway, so these are going to be stitch lines.
I'm going to do this just like I did the drawstring. We'll go in one hole and out the other, kind of like in one ear and out the other. And this one, I'm not going to find the middle of my elastic, although you could. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the end of my elastic or the joint, the place where the elastic and the ribbon join together. And I can feel right there, that's the edge of my elastic. It needs to go down here. And I can almost see it coming through. All right, so let me pull just more. There's the edge of my elastic, and there's the edge of my ribbon. And so I, this is where my, and I can feel those stitches that I took whenever I sewed it up first. That. I'm going to pin into that. This is at that three inch mark and I've caught my elastic in there. Okay, so this, we're going to do the same thing over here and the elastic is probably like there it is right there. So I'm almost at my pin. I could stitch there, but I want to make sure that I catch that elastic in my stitching and that just gives it an extra stability. There's the edge of my elastic. You can feel my stitches. It's right on that three inch mark. Pin that. I didn't have y'all mark where the where our buttons were gonna go, but I will show you a little cheater method in just a, just a second. So now we're gonna stitch to secure that elastic. Make sure nothing has shifted. It's right here. And you can come out and trim that if you want to, cut those extra threads off, or you can just slide over. Make sure I'm not catching the ponytail of the cap anywhere underneath that. Make sure I'm just on where I need to stitch. So there's the, it's already drawn up for them, and then just a little extra tug, and that brings it in for the, pon the rest of the ponytail. Now, to finish off the, if you're using a grove grain or a poly ribbon, uh, there's a couple of finishes. You could turn this and stitch it, just a straight stitch across there, or I'm going to cut that little, just nip that little piece off where the pin was in there. And I don't know whether I have any flame left in here or not, but we're going to see. Don't burn your house down. Don't burn your sewing room down. You can fuse the edge of that ribbon, especially whenever it's poly, and that'll keep it from raveling. All right. Get my cheater thing for you. If you're going to put buttons on here for a mask, and we should have marked the pattern at the beginning, but this is actually the way that I've been doing this, and that is it is seven inches. This is a piece of card stock. You can use just plain copy paper if you want, or you could just measure it. Seven inches down and two and three quarter inches in from this finished edge.
and that might be a little difficult for me to find that little dark because that's dark on dark. I'm going to go ahead and put a little pin in there just to make sure I can still see that. Flip this over. Use my cheater and it came through. There's a place where it came through. So there's my other mark for my button. Now then I am going to sew these on by hand and uh, you can stabilize it with a little piece of fabric uh, behind there or a little piece of interfacing. I want to show you this. This is the this is almost dry. It's kind of just a tiny little bit tacky but that's the little buttonhole thing uh, with the fabric fusion that we were using. And that seals off the edges. Now this, let me move that out of the way. But that seals off the edges to keep it from raveling out. Alright, so that's, that's an alternative to your buttonhole. Do you need me to show you how to put a button on? That's going to go there. That'll go on the other side. This is a big old needle. I'm going to double thread this. It's just the regular sewing thread, but I'm going to be sewing then with four strands of thread. And I'm using this gigantic needle so that you can, just so you can see. <clears throat> That's a piece of interfacing just to stabilize behind that button. I could use brown thread, but I'm using yellow. Go back into that spot and I'm catching my little piece of interfacing. Make sure that I'm not twisted. I'm going to hold on to my thread just a little bit. There we go. Come back through and I'm going to do this about three times and then tie off. There's two. three and tie this off and I just come underneath those threads and then catch this loop where it makes a little twist and makes that knot and I'll repeat this on the other side there we go thank you so much for watching I know this was a longer video um, I hope that you learned something in this. And listen, I would love it if you would... I mean, I do so many different things, as you can tell from my videos. Uh, I love creating. I do uh, paper crafting and watercolor and upholstery and DIY stuff. I would love to know what you would like to see next, whether you would want more uh, beginner uh, sewing tutorials or whether you want some different sewing projects or more DIY projects, you know, just leave me a comment below. And if you've liked this video, be sure you like and subscribe. Feel free to share it. And if you use this pattern, uh, don't sell the pattern, but you can sell or give away your caps if you want to sell them on Etsy, you want to sell them at a craft show. Uh, at a booth or something like that, at a, at a little gift shop, feel free to do that. Just don't sell the pattern. But thank you, thank you so much for coming and watching and staying to the end. And I will see you next time.